Well, we, we had another vote on the bailout bill, but this time the bill was much worse. You know, it's pretty amazing. You take a very, very bad bill, uh, appropriating $700 billion, and you can't get enough vote to pass it. So you take it back out. You make it much worse. You take it up to over $800 billion, and uh, it's 57 people. Most of them conservatives switched their votes. So that tells you a little bit about what's happening here in Washington. And the one very bad part of this bill was the fact that the, the tax portion was written by the Senate. And under the Constitution, only the House can originate tax bills. So that in itself was unconstitutional. But it's been done before, and it'll be done again. And, but it's just sort of the way things happen around here. But this, this bill, again, is just uh, more of the same. I did get a minute and a half on the House floor uh, today to talk. Uh, in opposition to the bill, and one of the points I made once again was that they're really not dealing with the problem. They're dealing with a uh, credit crunch, and there is one. And it's very, very serious. And if this bill uh, wouldn't have been passed, it would be very harmful to the economy. But my contention is passing the bill is going to make it even that more difficult uh, for for the economy. But the point really that I try to make constantly is that the credit crunch is, a, is symbolic and it's a symptom of a very serious disease that we have, overspending, overextension, and that what we're really dealing with now is uh, the actual bankruptcy of this country. And uh, we can look around for some good things that could come from this, and one is that we will be forced to live within our means and we won't be able to live on the credit card anymore as individuals have to learn to live within their means if they go bankrupt this country is going bankrupt and one of the benefits from this will be that we will not be the aggressors overseas we will have to change our foreign policy and we are in a somewhat similar situation as the uh, Soviets were in 1989 uh, when the uh, Soviet Empire came down but it came down for economic reasons and our our economic em empire and our military empire will come down because we can't afford this we can't do it so this is much more serious than and loosening up some credit but this whole idea that you can loosen up credit and solve the problem by doing the very things that cause the trouble. That is, spend too much, run up too much deficits, monetize a debt, which means more inflation and more regulation. That's exactly the wrong thing to do. We constantly do the wrong things and hope for another outcome. And it just doesn't work that way. Uh, but today, I think, uh, is a, even a sadder day than it uh, was on, on Monday. Monday, we had a little bit more joy saying the people spoke, the members of Congress listened, the bailout didn't go through. But here today, when the special interests got their two cents in or their ten million dollars worth of lobbying in the members switched their vote 57 switching their votes and winning this uh, appropriations overwhelmingly tells you that we have a long way to go so uh, we have to be on our toes if we do have this bankruptcy which I expect we will we better be on our toes and ready to make sure that we have something to say about rebuilding this economy and rebuilding our our republic and rebuilding our country rather than letting those who destroyed what we've had destroyed our freedoms and destroyed our money and destroyed our economy we should not let them do the rebuilding and that can be done I think there's enough people who have awakened in this country who have been energized and who are now studying Austrian free market economics and they understand it and a lot of young people I see them constantly they're understanding this and they're willing to study so I do in spite of all the tragic messes that we create here I still remain an optimist that the young people will finally come around and straightening out this mess.